The conviction of Staff Sergeant Luis Walker at Lackland Air Force Base last week in Texas on all 28 charges, including rape, has reignited a national debate about widespread sexual assault in the military. But this is only one small step for former service members like Jennifer Norris, who has gone public with her account of being raped by four different men during her Air Force training and during 14 years of active duty service. Now she's an advocate for service women who have been victims of sexual assault. Jennifer joins me now from Manchester, New Hampshire. And here in Washington, we have Congresswoman Jackie Speer, who is trying to pass legislation to protect members of the service from these attacks. Uh, Jennifer, thank you very much. Thank you for your courage in going public. Tell me what you are trying to accomplish here, and uh, what is your response to the Pentagon saying that it is attempting to address this problem and doing it aggressively? Well, as we witnessed through the Lackland trials once again, that was not an easy process for, for the victims involved. Um, and once again, it came out that there are predators within our ranks. It's been going on for decades. We've had scandal after scandal. And it's finally reached a breaking point where something needs to be done about this to save lives. There were, uh, according to the Pentagon's own statistics, something like 19,000 incidences in 2010. Only 87 percent, or 87 percent, went unreported, according to those statistics. Uh, Congresswoman Speer, what can be done about this? And, and are you satisfied that the Pentagon is doing enough? No, I actually don't think the Pentagon is doing enough, and that's why I that we need to create a separate office within the military, so that individuals who have been the victims of rape and sexual assault can report their complaints to that separate office and know that they will be handled in a judicious fashion. What happened at Lackland is proof positive that there were 31 victims that have been identified. Only one has actually reported it. And that is because of the fear of retaliation, the fear that they will be dismissed from their service. And that has happened over and over again where they're labeled with with personality disorders and then they are dismissed this, they are honorably discharged but involuntarily discharged and these are careers that they had hoped to be able to explore now Jennifer I know you were not part of the Lackland case those women cannot talk publicly about it uh, because they are active duty service members what are you hoping to accomplish and did you during your time of active duty did you complain to your superiors what happened when you tried to protest well, initially I didn't say anything for the same reasons that the basic trainees didn't say anything for fear of losing my career. And to civilians, that might not seem like a big deal, but to someone in the military, it takes a lot of courage and distinction for one to, to actually want to raise their right hand and give up everything that all their rights in order to serve. So when you join, it's very important to you to to maintain, you know, that career and that camaraderie ship and that family. And it's basically what's what's happened is is our own soldiers are being betrayed by people within our ranks. And unfortunately they're not being handled in the most appropriate fashion. Hence the reason I do support as a former military sexual assault survivor the STOP Act. Get out of the chain of command and put it into a separate entity that basically will make things seem more fair, that, that the, pr the process will be handled with less bias and we can actually do something about these predators and be thanking the women and men that step forward for telling the leadership that these people are within our ranks. Uh, Congresswoman Speer, finally, uh, what is the chance that that legislation will get through? Well, we have 125 co-sponsors. It's a bipartisan piece of legislation. We are pushing a large boulder up a hill. This is not something that the military is going to embrace on its own. It really is going to require all of the courageous women to speak up, and men, because it happens to men and women in the military, um, to force the military to take these cases out of the chain of command. The chain of command creates a conflict of interest. Either they are the perpetrator or the friend of the perpetrator, 
or they have a career that they don't want to have smudged by the fact that there was a rape that took place under their command. So we really need to do much more than we're doing. And uh, there's probably 500,000 men and women who have been raped in the military over the last 15 or 20 years. I mean, it's an incredible number. And we, we have got to take this much more seriously than we have been over the last 25 years. Congressman Jackie Spear, thank you. Jennifer, thank you very much for speaking up and speaking out. And thank you for your service. Thank you. You're welcome. And up next, live from London,